The first truly revolutionary means of reproduction, photography, turned art into a reaction. At the time, art reacted with the doctrine of art for art's sake, that is, with the theology of art. This gave rise to what might be called a negative theology in the form of the idea of pure art, which not only denied any social function of art, but also any categorizing by subject matter. This means that for the first time in world history, mechanical reproduction liberates the work of art from its parasitical dependence on ritual. As a consequence, this enables the work of art to be based on politics instead of being based on ritual. Because, the instant the criterion of authenticity ceases to be applicable to artistic production, the total function of art is reversed. This brings us to what Benjamin calls the aestheticization of politics. Benjamin associates this idea with fascism. The logical result of fascism is the introduction of aesthetics into political life, and all efforts to render politics aesthetic culminate in one thing, war. This is the situation of politics which fascism is rendering aesthetic. On the opposite side, there is politicizing art, and this is the response of communism to the aestheticization of politics. By politicizing art, art can remain separate from politics. Nevertheless, it can also be used politically. How do we value a work of art? The cult value and the exhibition value of a work are used to receive and value that work, because artistic production begins with ceremonial objects destined to serve in a cult. However, in photography, exhibition value displaces cult value. With the different methods of technical reproduction of a work of art, its fitness for exhibition can increase to such an extent that the quantitative shift between its two poles turns into a qualitative transformation of its nature. Today, we do not waste time disputing the artistic value of painting versus photography as people did in the 19th century. For Benjamin, the important question is not whether photography is an art, the primary question is whether the very invention of photography had not transformed the entire nature of art. The same question is raised when we are dealing with film versus photography. The artistic performance of a stage actor is definitely presented to the public by the actor in person. That of the screen actor, however, is presented by a camera. For instance, the aura which on stage emanates from Macbeth cannot be separated from the spectators from that of the actor. The singularity of the shot in the studio is that the camera is substituted for the public. Consequently, the aura that envelops the actor vanishes, and with it, the aura of the figure he portrays. For centuries, a small number of writers were confronted by many thousands of readers. This changed toward the end of the 19th century. With the increasing extension of the press, which kept placing new political, religious, scientific and professional ideas before the readers, an increasing number of readers became writers, at first occasional ones. As a result, the distinction between author and public is about to lose its basic character. Benjamin applies this to the film. In cinematic practice, particularly in the Soviet Union, this changeover had partially become established reality. Some of the players whom we see in Soviet films are not actors, but people who portray themselves. I think the best example of this can be seen in Soviet propaganda movies. At the end, I would like to wrap up by quoting a passage from Benjamin that sums up this whole essay. The technique of reproduction detaches the reproduced object from the domain of tradition. By making many reproductions, it substitutes a plurality of copies for a unique existence. And in permitting the reproduction to meet the beholder or listener in his own particular situation, it reactivates the object reproduced. These two processes lead to a tremendous shattering of tradition which is the obverse of the contemporary crisis and renewal of mankind.